Action. It should not be one-sided that you use it for your own benefit and forget about it. Then you will never grow. You will never grow. If you have to grow, then you must store that compassion within. Whatever compassion I've given you, love I've given you, you must store that within and give that back to others. Otherwise, you will be finished. You will be nowhere. It's the growth which is sustained only, not only by sucking from one side, but by giving to others. Otherwise, you'll be stagnated. There has to be outlook. But that is a very hard thing because people are very good at taking compassion from others. Or even if they are compassionate, they will be mostly compassionate to people who are, say, in, say, Vietnam, not in the ashram. They are more worried about Vietnam people, you know. Oh, Mother, we are worried about Vietnam people, we are collecting money for them, we are trying to send money to Vietnam, and here among ashramites, it's fighting. This is not compassion by any chance. Sahaja Yogis among themselves are a different field and they are to support each other all the time and look after them. When I find Sahaja Yogis criticizing Sahaja Yogis, I'm amazed. I'm really amazed because you are part and parcel of the same. How can you criticize one eye criticizing another person? I just can't understand. I can criticize, all right. But why should you? Why should you criticize each other? Only thing that you have to do is to love each other. Christ has said it thrice. I must have said it 108 times already. That you have to love each other. That is the only way you are expressing compassion if I have given you any love any time. You have to have patience with others, love for others. I sometimes try to coax people. And I find that people immediately come out with some sort of a criticism of others or something like that. Now the basic thing is that our compassion, if that is flowing, then only we can get compassion from others. There is no place anymore, I've done too much compassion <coughs> business. And what I find that now, unless and until you flow it, how am I to give you compassion? I mean, there's no space left now. So better give it away, empty yourself a little bit, then I can give you more compassion. It's simple business. In this respect, one has to understand <coughs> that the source cannot flow unless and until it expands the flow of it, like the river Thames. We went to see the river Thames, uh, the place from where it starts. It's a small little stream from seven streams, little, little, very little, little, we can say trickling down. It has become a river Thames. Supposing it does not widen, that will stop at the beginning only. It cannot come, it cannot flow. It's not because it is angry or upset or anything like that, but by the nature of its flow, only it cannot flow what to do. So that is what it is, that one has to give compassion to others. It should not be formal compassion or affected one, but should be a natural one, very natural, spontaneous feeling from within. It's not an expression of your ego or superego or over-sentimentality, but is a kind of a understanding that he is a Sahajogi, you are a Sahajogi, you are brothers, not the way the brothers have been, but a different type of brothers who are spiritual brothers. You are a spiritual people. So this compassion <coughs> has to be there, and unless and until you de develop that compassionate fatherly or motherly feelings for others. I mean, I am a mother of a person who is about 108 years of age. 
you have to really mother others and have that feeling of compassion and love for others. You don't have to think about your own comfort, you don't have to think about your own advantages, but you have to think about the comfort of others. You have to think what you can do to make others comfortable than to see what will make you comfortable. So this flow of compassion when it starts, you see, the dedication is complete. Because whatever we got from you, Mother, we are giving it to others. That's the dedication. So the flow of dedication is not one-sided, it is double-sided. You stick on to something, you get connected with something, you get something out of it and you give it to others and ultimately that reaches the collective being, means it reaches the Source. It is in this light we have to understand. Exclusiveness, oh, we should now marry, we should have separate place, we should live separately, it's all right. You must have little privacy as a married people, I am not saying that. But as far as compassion is concerned, as married people you have to be much more compassionate. But you will only worry about your own children, about your own comfort, about your own husband, about your own wife. In Sahaja Yoga there is no place for such people. It's all collective. When you bring sweets for your own child, bring for other children in the ashram, you are one family and all the family has to move with the same leaves. I had told you before that we cannot have separate food arrangements, separate this and separate that. And in the same way, we cannot have separate standards of living for different people. We all have to enjoy whatever is enjoyed by all of you. That should be so. And that should be achieved on material level, on emotional level. Any marriage which is absurd, which makes everyone unhappy, is useless. But marriages are made to make everyone happy. So before you decide to marry, think that you are not playing tricks. Playing tricks in Sahaja Yoga is very, very dangerous. You are not playing tricks with your marriages. You are not trying to involve somebody else, thinking that mother will forgive you or not. I will forgive you, but your ascent is difficult. So don't try to play tricks with anything that you have been doing before, but change yourself completely, transform yourself completely. Now you change your attitude towards life, you can, because it is changed already. If you try to be the other person, you cannot. Now you have become a flower, now you can't become suddenly the leaf. Now you are a flower and you have to live like a flower. And that's what you have to remember, that compassion is such an outflow, it's such a natural thing for a Sahaja it's not natural for anybody else. Other people who talk of compassion or this and that are actually, are not at all compassionate. They are doing it for money, they are doing it for position, they are doing it for ego satisfaction. But you are ha having compassion because you have to have it, you are living. It is flowing, the compassion, because it has to flow. And you are doing compassion because of compassion. There is no other purpose behind it. Only this will give you something that is of permanent nature, of a sthayi nature. I have seen people, as I was telling in the morning, who have gone to an organization, made a beautiful organization out of it, and once they leave, the organization is finished. Because they do not give anything substantial to that organization. And what is to be given is a large heart of compassion. If you do not give that, once you go away from that, the rest of them are again barren. It's not grown. Like if you bring water and plant, things and give water to that area, then it becomes very uh, beautiful and you can say it's a very uh, lush, lush growth. But as soon as that water source is removed, it gets again dried up. 
But Sahaja Yoga is different. In Sahaja Yoga, you not only grow as a plant, but also as the source of the plant. If this plant is removed from here, put somewhere, it will give water to other plants. Do you know this new dimension that you have within yourself? That once this plant is uprooted from here and taken out, it will not die, not at all. It will grow, but it will make others grow. This is another type of a growth that we have. And it's a very different position we are in. And that's what now I want, that all of you, even if you are uprooted and put into any other place. I've seen when I ask people that you better shift from here to there, they just get frightened. You better go there and do this, they get frightened. You are a plant which can not only go and prosper in any place, but you will give the necessary nourishment to other plants. That's what you are. So do not stick on to one place. If you stick on, then think there must be something wrong with the place. Like a glue, if you are sticking to one place, it's very dangerous. And be sure that you must turn away from such a place which glues you. That doesn't mean that as people are here, they never stay in the house, all the time running out. It doesn't mean. Again, I have to strike that point, because otherwise the people are here, are all the time running away from their houses. That's not the point. The point is that you should not be glued to anything and not afraid of leaving any place because now you are Sahajogis. You have joined the ocean and ocean can take you anywhere. So just prepare yourself to move into any place because you have to take this compassion everywhere and to prosper the kingdom of God you have to serve Him. And this service is only possible if you know that you are here for a very great universal task, not only for England, for India or for uh, America, but you are here for a global task which is the epitome of our evolution. This is the highest thing we have to do for our creation and for our Creator and you are chosen for that. So don't divert your attention to anything that is not fulfilling your own manifestation. Discard all that. Don't waste your energy. And your manifestation is your compassion, your love. But still it should not remain rational. Whatever I have said to you, is just to put you into a condition where you start sucking the vibrations as well as giving the vibrations. It is an action which is a happening that should take place within you. It's not rationality, it's not thinking about it. Only by saying these things I really stun your thinking. You should allow this to happen to you just with the Vibratory awareness, you should judge yourself, am I the one who is giving vibrations to others? Am I the one who has stored these vibrations or am I getting ruined? All this will give you a great meaning and an employment, as I said, employed by God. If you have any questions, ask me. You see, if you get angry within yourself and if you are sure that you are not doing anything wrong, for a Sahaja Yogi there is no need to say outside you are angry, there is no need. That anger itself is a power and you should do your bandhan and anything that you want to do. But you should not show that you are angry. You should be absolutely silent because you can be. You are in the axis, you are not on the periphery. 
Actually, the anger is just to see your anger and use that anger for that purpose. And once you start doing that, that anger will itself work out. That anger will itself work out the person. And you'll be amazed how it but you must learn to see your anger that is working. All these things are important. You have seen that sometimes only shouting at the boots they go away. And many mad people have been cured like that. But you don't do all that. That's for me. You must be always decent with decorum and all that. But if the anger is because of your nature or a tendency or out of control, then it's a bad thing. If it is an out of control, then it's a bad thing. If you get into a temper because it is out of control, then it's a bad thing. I can get very angry, but I'm completely under control. I know why I'm angry, where the boot is, how he's running away, I can see. <laughs> but you can't see the boot, you can't see anything. So there is no need for you to get angry, show temper. But if you have an anger, say for example, which makes you uncontrolled, then there is a mantra for that, Shanti. Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Shanti Rupena Samastha. You must ask for that bliss, for that peace. This is a mantra for you. For controlling your temper, you have to tell yourself, Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Shanti Rupena Samastha. So Shanti is the point, the access point is that. Where, from where you witness everything, you are in Shanti, you are in complete you are not in a turmoil, even if you are angry. You are not in a turmoil. Whatever is angry is the power, and the power is taking charge. But unless and until that is achieved, what you have to do is to put yourself in a position that you are peaceful. So I think that's a very good mantra, is to say, Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Shanti Rupena Saustita. Can you say that? So the shanti is your fort. But peacefulness never means cowardice. Never call cowardice as peace. A person who is peaceful is never coward because nothing can transgress it. Nothing can overpower it. It is never, never possible that cowardice and peace can go together. But your power is inside, not outside. So you don't show your power of your anger outside. But just a little anger with anybody, you will see it will work out. But first establish that, that position within you where you are the access, where you do not allow anchor to sit on your head. That is the growth, that is the growth, that you are at peace. Also, another question. All right, satisfied now? Both ways you should know. That one is the anger that is detached is perfectly all right. Anger which involves you, work it out. So judge yourself as to what it is. Good question. Mm. Now some questions. When such intellectuals were sitting here, ask me some questions. What is that? Huh? What are my plans? I don't plan. You see, I don't plan because I don't know how far uh, my instruments are ready. You see, first now my only plans, if I have any, is to really prepare my weapons all right. Once they are done, then we'll fix them up. You see, unless and until you know how far your bomb can fall, how can you plan it? <laughs> so first of all, I must measure up the power of my children, how powerful they are. That's what I'm trying to do now, is to make them aware of their powers, to use. Like you see Hanumana, when he was born and when he grew up, he forgot that time. And he forgot his powers. 
So he wants to be reminded that you are such and such powerful person. You don't know what your powers are. You, you ate of the whole of Surya. This you did in your childhood. You are born with this power, but now after growing, you are rather be sort of uh, forgotten it, and also you are you were afraid of using them, and it's uh, sort of looks like in a domi uh, dominant position. But it is there. If you just try to remember them, it will come. They have tremendous power. These people have tremendous power, but they have to assume and stand on that. If they do not do it. You see, if I tell them now, go to this house, oh mother, there may be a bhut there sitting. There. <laughs> <laughs> a person comes possessed in the ashram. They all shut their doors, oh God, this bhut has come. <laughs> or something. Then what? Hmm? Those who are devoted to me. They are what? Then again, the same thing, Jamel, is the same thing. Is you see, it is you have to do it. All those who are doing that way, I'm just pointing out to all those. If you are using, uh, say, your uh, devotion to me for the oppressing of others, all right? So it is for you to see. There is nobody who can be oppressed because your spirit cannot be oppressed. Say there is X and Y. Now Y is a person who is trying to oppress X, all right? What will you oppress? He can't oppress his spirit, can he? First point. Now, this fellow, if he has to have attachment to me, nobody can stop him. There is all you all have direct relationship, not through anyone. If you want to accept somebody's uh, agency, then I can't help you. But otherwise, you all have a direct access to me. You all can grow your spirits. Nobody can dominate you. Everyone has complete freedom to grow their spirit, to know their spirit. I mean to say. And the spirit is something cannot be dominated by. Now, supposing tries somebody tries to oppress, what will they oppress you in which way? They'll say, "All right, we'll not have this carpet. We'll have that carpet. Or have it." Somebody will say, "I'll jump in the sea. Jump. Just now, you jump." <laughs> what will they oppress you in? You see, just see that, not in your spiritual growth. Can they? And that's how the problem starts. You see, in material things, say in an ashram now, somebody says, all right, we would like to have a photograph of Mother put there. The other will say, no, we are going to have it there. <laughs> Whether you put it here or there, makes no difference, my photograph is going to work. Even in puja matters I have seen, people will say that, no, Mother is sitting there, don't put your feet towards the Mother. It's a common thing everybody knows should not put it. But still they will say, no, we want to put it. All right, let them put it. Next time they will not, because they will know it is wrong. They will find out. So, you see, nobody can oppress anyone. I am here to correct. Once you understand that you are not perfect, the other is not perfect. We are all perfecting ourselves. We are all coming up. Mother is there to look after us. Then we will never think like that. Now, I have also seen people will say that there are two Sahaja Yogis talking to other Sahaja Yogis. Now, one is a very oppressive one, the another one is upset to see that this one is oppressive. Now, for that purpose, if you are quiet, silent, you will always dominate him. People will listen to you, not to him. But even if you start saying, oh, you don't say like that, and this, they will think these are fighting cocks. Then at that time, your wiser, this thing, will even give him a chance to understand. But what happens, one person dominates, another tries to dominate them by outward things, and the whole show is over. 
there is no need to dominate another person by outward things, he will settle down by himself, if you show your dignity of your silence and of your understanding of Sahaja Yoga. There is no need just now to say, shut up, you sit down, you don't do it, it's absolutely <laughs> wrong. They do it, I have seen, in my presence I have seen. Because we still live halfway there and halfway here. The way we solve the problem, say you have to do some business, there are two people doing the business. One person says something, another says, why did you say like this, you shouldn't say. That this person says to that person, uh, you shouldn't correct me, like that the fight is on. But that doesn't help anyway, they are also. But in Sahaja Yoga it will never help. The another person can only win over by his dignity, by his quiet methods, by approaching a person properly. That's how the leaders will come. They won't come up by shooting another person down, not at all by any chance. That's not possible. It's not good leadership. Good leadership is just the way you handle the situation, not the way you fight another man down. So many times you have seen, I just keep quiet, it works out. Not necessary that you should at that moment shout. There's no need. And it creates a very bad impression and very bad leadership. First of all, you cannot be dominated. This is one fact, is a truth. You can grow in your spirituality, whatever people may try to dominate in the worldly things. Thank God we don't have any organization. Thank God we don't have secretaries, assistant secretaries, under secretaries, vice secretaries, upper secretaries, lower secretaries. We don't have any answer. Otherwise, even that would have been dominating.